is equal to the square root of the inverse of the molar masses. So helium on top, CH4 on bottom. And now, uh, you would expect in general lighter things to go faster. So helium's going to be moving much faster than CH4. And you'll see this mathematically turn out. But if this is faster, then this, this ratio is going to be less than 1. Okay. So this will be the square root of 4.003 from the periodic table, grams per mole, and uh, 16.042, I believe, or something like that, grams per mole for methane, and you calculate that out. Now, here, because it's a ratio, you don't have to put it in SI units, uh, but if you did, it wouldn't hurt you. So if you change those to kilograms, that's totally fine. Okay, if you wanted to find, for example, the kinetic energy that these two exist at at 273 Kelvin, uh, you can use either formula, though I usually think it's easier to use the 3 halves RT formula. So 3 halves R, 8.3145 times uh, 273 Kelvin, and that would give you the kinetic energy of those. Remember, the kinetic energy for both at the same temperature on average would be, the average kinetic energy would be the same. Their velocities on average would not be the same, okay? Another thing to know, if you're just looking at helium, for example, all the helium atoms have the same average velocity, but each particular helium atom does not have the same velocity as another particular helium atom, but on average they're the same, okay? So keep in mind those. Now, the next thing we went through is the gas laws. So let's take a look at the gas laws. Uh, we went through Boyle's, Charles, Avogadro's, Gay-Lussac, all, all these kinds of gas laws, uh, as well as like the ideal gas law. And so the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT. If you solve for R here, you'll get PV over RT of the look, NT, PV over NT, and uh, since we have a proportionality constant, we can say, well, this could be its state 1 and would equal PV over NT at state 2. Uh, and so that second one now is called the combined gas law, which is actually a combination of Boyle's, Charles, etc., all those. So, the way to tell the difference between which kind of equation to use, and these are the sets of equations, including Graham's law, that you don't have to use SI units, though you can if you want to. I usually think it's not, um, it's, it's easier if you don't. Um, and in fact, as long for the second one, for the first one, the units, I'd recommend matching them to R. So liters, atmospheres, moles, kelvins. Uh, for this equation, as long as the pressure unit's the same, volume's the same, moles would be the same, and temperature units would be kelvin. So as long as the pressure and the volume units match up, you're, you're pretty good. Uh, they don't need to be in any particular unit. And they don't need to match R for the combined gas law or any variation thereof. So uh, how do you tell the difference? If there are multiple pressures, volumes, moles, or temperatures involved, then we're talking about the combined gas law. If there's just a single pressure, volume, temperature, whatever, we're talking about the top one. So just take a look. I'm not going to do an example of the combined gas law, though I do want to say a little bit more about the ideal gas law. Just make sure you can do these, because these are gimmies that are going to be like mostly plug and chug feelings. Uh, for the ideal gas law, let me say a little bit. We can combine this with density as mass over volume, or molar mass is mass over moles. So you could see a problem, which is ideal gas law problem, but we toss in density or and or mass and or uh, molar mass. And uh, don't let that throw you. That's still ideal gas law. It's just using these two equations in combination. So make sure you can kind of able to put those kinds of uh, equations together. Uh, to solve any sort of question that you're asked for. All right, I'm going to move to the law of combining volumes.
Okay, for the law of combining volumes, let's get uh, a reaction on the board here. Let's say we go NO plus O2 goes to NO2. And let me balance this. I think if I put two here and two here, that would be one, two, three, four. Yeah. Okay, let's say we have this reaction. Let's say they're all gases. Okay? Gas, gas, gas. Okay, for the law of combining volumes, a typical question could be, and this will usually be an extremely easy question. Uh, let's say I have 2.0 liters of this, and I want to know the volume of this. And if you have one of these things, normally you do stoichiometrically, you can convert this to moles, then you need to go to mole ratio to get to here, and then you convert this to volume. Uh, however, using the law of combined volumes, you can use volume ratios now. So what that means is, uh, you have 2.0 liters of NO. And then you multiply by a volume ratio, which is 2. Point, uh, oops. You have uh, 2 liters, because of that 2 right there, 2 liters of NO2. For every, now you have a 2 right here. So 2 liters of NO. The volume of NO cancels, and you're left with the volume of NO2. In this case, uh, a lot of 2s would cancel. There's a lot of 2s in this problem that I just made up. 2.0 liters of NO2. And so I just found the answer using the volume ratio. So make sure you can do that kind of stuff. Uh, it's a, typically a pretty easy problem when you get to the law of combined volumes. Okay, I'll often have that in a multiple choice sort of question. Okay, let's move on. We're going to move on to now what's section 6. Uh, and this is going to be a mixture of the gases, page 47 in the reader. And it's everywhere. It's in the textbook and the notes, etc. Okay, this stuff, this is going to be the uh, Dalton's Law stuff. You know it's this kind of problem whenever you have more than one gas involved. Okay, um, so formulas to keep in mind here, and again, uh, if you look at the back of some of the practice exams on SmartSite, you'll see what the deal is, but we've got, uh, this is mole fraction of A is the partial pressure of A divided by the total pressure. It's also the moles of A divided by the total moles. It's also the volume of A divided by the total volume. Uh, so we'll commonly use that. We'll commonly use that the sum of the partial pressures, PA plus PB plus whatever other partial pressure there is, is equal to the total pressure. Often use the sum of the moles, uh, mole A plus mole B equals the total moles. We'll say that the sum of the, we don't usually use this volume one, but sometimes you do, depending on the problem. Sum of the volumes equal the total volumes. And also, uh, you can put in there the sum of the mole fractions, whatever mole fractions are involved, will equal 1. Okay? So those are some equations you might use. I commonly use, though there's different ways to do these problems, the ideal gas law. PV equals NRT. And just something to note, most students intuitively don't even get stuck on this. But you can have different subscripts down here. So it can be P total, V total, N total. So they can all be uh, totals if you want down there. Or one of them can be a total. And so the most common, say you have partial pressure of A times volume total equals the moles of A, R, T. So that's a common one I might use sometimes where you're actually using the total volume, but specific moles for the partial pressure. Uh, specific uh, for A, the partial pressure and the moles, or you can, another common way to write this, P total is V A N A, oops, A R T, and this is all the notes. These are just some equations you commonly use when you're doing these kind of problems, okay? Now, uh, let's do a typical problem. This will solve, follow the flow that I've given you before. Uh, this is one way to do the problem.